Welcome everybody. Today we'll be walking through some of the new features and then how to help our customers protect and secure their data. Joining me, my name is Nishant Kohli. I'm one of the outbound product managers for cloud storage and joining me today is Shubhashish Chakraborty. Shubhashish, if you want to quick, do a quick intro. Hi folks, I'm Shubhashish. I'm the product management lead for uh, Google Cloud Storage's uh, security and enterprise government governance. Thank it's a you. Pleasure to, uh, you know, talking to all of you on, on some of these exciting features. Nice. So, you know, this is a series of many videos we're going to be looking to do, but today's focus on some two key features that we'll talk about and how we're helping our customers protect their data and secure their data. So, Shub, let's look at, you know, some of the challenges we've heard from our customers generally around how do they protect their data from being publicly exposed and also protecting it from, you know, malicious actors that are out there. So let's talk, what are we doing in cloud storage to help our customers? Yeah, so I think if you look at broadly, like if you look at the vast swath of different public cloud storage offerings out there, uh, for the last few years, I think, you know, we have seen a lot of instances where, you know, customers are having that data publicly exposed. Uh, as you, you know, alluded to it, I think broadly there are two reasons. One reason is you have malicious actors, you know, some insiders might be leaking the data out for whatever reasons. Uh, but I think even more commonly, the reason is that, like if you look at uh, the scale of uh, the various public cloud storages out there, managing permissions at that scale, uh, and especially when you have fine-grained permissions, like if you have object-level permissions, right? Managing permissions at scale and ensuring that you have the right security posture through and through across all this granularity is a, is a very hard job. So what we see is uh, most often, uh, customers' data end up being in the public internet because they don't know that they don't have the right, uh, you know, permissions uh, and settings. And uh, in order to address this, we built a capability which is called as public access prevention. It is a, uh, you know, it's a one-click experience. It's a single setting. You can set it at a bucket level. You can set it in the resource hierarchy anywhere in the organization or in the folder or in the project. It's one button you click and it ensures whether you are using IAM policies or you are using ACLs or you are using IAM conditions, right? Whatever be the way you are managing your permissions, there is one button which you click and you say, my data should not be publicly uh, accessible versus with some other you know, public cloud storage services out there where you may have to deal with like nine different buttons and figure out how to you know, have them work together. No, that's, I mean, it seems pretty simple to set up. Uh, can you talk a little bit more? You know, it's a great feature that we've introduced. It's now hopefully GA and being used. So how publicly it's being used by our customers? Uh, how successful are we with this capability? Yeah, so this is one of the most, uh, you know, popular features I have seen uh, from the time of launch. It has been, I think, roughly six months at this point. We have over 400 enterprise customers using this feature. We have over 400K buckets, which are protected using public access prevention. So this feature has had one of the strongest adoptions uh, across the board. And from the time we GA this feature until today in six months, we haven't had a single customer support issues. So it, all, it shows not just you know quantitatively, we have had a lot of traction, but even in terms of quality, it has been a good feature for our uh, customers. And uh, we hear from a lot of customers on a regular basis that they're super happy with this feature. And more and more customers are integrating this in their Terraform flows or any kind of uh, automa automation flows so that this best practice is instilled into all of their workflows. No, that's amazing. So, you know, especially like you said, at the scale that this feature can get adopted and getting automation in place and ensuring that customers at a get go are protecting their data from a public access seems like a great capability. Um, as far as going across, let's look at potentially, you know, how easy is it, as you mentioned, is a simple click of a button. So let's look at that aspect of it. If you can walk us through. Yeah. So here you see, this is the Google cloud storage, you know, GUI, this is the bucket creation flow. And as you create a bucket, you know, you can choose and enforce uh, public uh, access prevention. So you can say prevent public access. We strongly recommend that you have this setting. Once you have this setting on, then it doesn't matter, you know, whether you have uniform 
bucket level access or you have fine grain permission. So whether you are only dealing with IAM policies or you are doing with uh, bucket ACLs or object ACLs, right? And as I said, various other ways, like you might be having IAM conditions and all that kind of stuff, right? Whatever way uh, you are managing permissions uh, for that bucket, uh, this one setting will ensure that none of your data can ever land up in the public internet, right? Uh, and then if you go to the next page, uh, once you have created your bucket using this setting, you can actually go to the permissions tab and you see that uh, your bucket is uh, not public, right? Uh, and this was the example where you set it uh, at a bucket level when you are creating a bucket. But if you go to the next screen over here, what you could see is you can go to settings and you can actually go to a project level and you can set uh, public access prevention at a project level. That will ensure that all the buckets which are already there under that project or any future buckets which get created, all of them will have uh, public access prevention uh, enabled. And actually, it's not just at a project level, anywhere in the organizational hierarchy. So it could be folder level, it could be the org node. At every level, you can set it on. And that ensures all uh, resources under that level will have this protection on. Now, that seems uh, pretty straightforward, simple to set up and configure. And you mentioned once you set it up at the project level, all the buckets within that project will naturally adopt that capability. And then it's the same thing. You know, you mentioned when configuring PAP, you know, you it's a bit of a superset. So even your IAM policies, the granular policies can take effect, but the public access prevention even protects from anybody getting visibility to bucket from public access completely. So it seems like a very good way of protecting customers' data. No, it seems yes. like a yes. great yes. capability. Yeah, one of our big concern here was there are so many different ways to manage permission. Unless we build something unified, like one button which can take care of everything, the combinant tricks, it might be hard for customers to manage. So that was our main emphasis here. Make a very simple feature, which is unified, which works across all different ways. No, that's awesome. No, so I think this is great. Let's talk a little bit more around, you know, the next level capability that we are thinking. Often, you know, challenges when customers are protecting a data isn't external. There generally happens to be internal. You know, most data we've seen or data losses scenarios we've seen are prone to due to human error or maybe a rogue application gone wrong kind of challenges. So let's talk what we're doing in cloud storage to help our customers protecting from internal failures or internal malicious actors. Yeah, so, you know, we talked earlier about how to prevent your data from getting accessed outside, right? Like. If your data gets hacked, that's a big problem. But I think even more common problem is if you accidentally end up deleting your data, right? Uh, what we have seen in last few years is, uh, I would say more than 95% of the cases, customers end up having uh, a data loss situation on their end or you know, accidentally deleting their data because of either an operator error, somebody just deleted something by mistake, or uh, many times, you know, you have various softwares uh, where uh, they can end up deleting like the wrong artifact or ending up deleting the wrong version of the data, you know, that you wanted to delete. So I think this accidental uh, or fat fingering use cases are the major contributors to uh, customers uh, ending up accidentally deleting or overwriting their data. And uh, you know, in order to address this uh, object storage, like Google Cloud Storage is an object storage, it has a unique capability where uh, it is transactional. Every single time you write, it is a new version, right? So if you look at traditionally the various file systems or the uh, block storage services, uh, they are journal based. So, you know, the snapshotting capability you have is point in time. So you can say, okay, roll it back to this point in time and then you get the entire set of changes rolls back to that, right? Versus in object storage, you can be super fine grained because every single write is a new uh, version. So we took care of, uh, you know, we took advantage of that capability and we put together a, a new feature which is called a soft delete. So what soft delete does is it uses versioning, this capability that our object storage has versioning and it also uses object lifecycle management together and gives you a, a capability where if you are creating a bucket, you know, uh, we would recommend that you have at least one version saved 
uh, for seven days if it is your standard storage tier. And as you get to colder storage tier, it could be one version for 30 days, uh, or it could be one version for 90 days for cold line, or one version for one year for archive, right? So in this feature, we wanted to ensure while you actually are protected uh, with versions, but at the same time, it is cost effective. You don't end up in a situation where you have no control over how many versions your data may end up having and what would be the implication on cost. So soft delete ties together versioning with object lifecycle management and ensures you can specify how many uh, copies of version, how many versions you want to retain, and for how many days you want to retain. So that is the magic of soft delete. So it sounds like you know what we're doing is we can't prevent human errors, but at least we can prevent you know re resolving from those errors. So combining our capability with soft delete and versioning, we're able to help customers prevent failures. And then you mentioned you know his in the general when these failures used to happen previously. What was the customer experience when we didn't have this feature? So when we did not have this feature, uh, you know, uh, usually the customers would. Uh, file a support ticket, and they would work with uh, the Google Cloud Storage Engineering. Uh, and it was a you know difficult experience for everyone uh, because our policy was per customer during the life cycle of engagement with the customer, we'll only entertain it once, and we'll then recommend that they use versioning. But you know customers had some challenges with versioning because versioning without requisite object life cycle management rules can have implications on your cost. Uh, so since the time we have uh, launched this capability, you know, now the new experience is that it is self-service where, uh, you know, in the UI or in the API, you actually see, okay, these are all my deleted versions, you know, these are non-current versions, we call them, and then you can actually uh, restore. Uh, so it's a self-service experience, it's a experience supported in the GUI, in the API, in all the uh, tools as well. And what that has resulted into is today we have 16 million buckets which are protected with versioning. And uh, since the time we have launched it around the same timeline as PAP, you know, last six months, what we have seen is there are 8,000 instances where customers have self-serviced restores, you know, and it was an instantaneous experience. Like they just went into GUI, they just restored it, it was instantaneous. They didn't have to engage with customer support, file a ticket, you know, go through all these high touch point experiences. Yeah, so it sounds like you know having this capability helps our customers not necessarily prevent from the failures, but resolve from the failures on their own. They can resurrect the previous versions and go back. You mentioned some of the settings. Um, hopefully, in the next few slides, we we'll kind of show some screenshots. So let me go to that um, yeah. and help our customers prevent from you know. Uh, maybe using too much storage uh, as would they provide this capability. So let's walk through some of the things that we have for here. Yeah, so this is again, uh, you know, the bucket creation flow. So as you uh, create a bucket, uh, what soft delete enables you is you can actually choose object versioning. You can say, yes, I want versioning to be enabled for my bucket. And then you can choose what is the max number of versions that you want to uh, retain in this bucket per object, right? So this is the example of the standard storage class. So you say, by default, we have like one version and seven days. By the way, these numbers are, as you can see, like you can edit these numbers. If you say, oh, I'm not comfortable with one version, I want to keep three versions. And I'm not okay with seven days. I want to keep 30 days. This is my organization's policy. This is my you know, compliance requirement, right? So you can uh, change these numbers. Uh, by default, we have kept numbers which we think are fine for most customers, but you know, these numbers can be overridden. So this is your bucket creation flow. In the bucket creation flow, as you can see, uh, we tie together versioning and object lifecycle management. And then if you go to the next screen, so here, after you have created the bucket, you can see that object versioning is uh, enabled. And uh, you can also see right below it uh, that you have your uh, object lifecycle management policies. If you want to manage the rules, you can go there. So one is at the time of creation, but later on, if you want to modify, you can go and actually manage the uh, rules as well. And then if you go further, so this is when you delete something. So when you when you are trying to delete something, this UI is telling you that although you are deleting, but because versioning is enabled, you know you might have a non-current version of this state, right? Uh, so if you go through, so we are now in a situation where uh, you know you have deleted something. 
but you can see uh, in object versioning that there is a live object and then there is an older version of the object, right? So now you want to recover. So say you want to restore from that older version. So you select that older version and you say, I want to copy from this older version into the right. current namespace. So you do a copy, we call it a copy, which, which is more like an export operation. Uh, and this way you can restore. And the beauty of this is you might have your existing live object and now you have restored from an older version. And this doesn't override the existing live object. Now you have two and then you can reconcile and you can say, okay, the one that I restored is the one I want. And or you can say, oh, I restored it, but it's not really the one I want. I'm okay with the live one. So we give this capability. Customers. No, it sounds like you know customers have a lot more power control uh, in case of a failure or even in place of an override that happened while they were working on the object. So, you know, this gives a better granularity and control from any either application errors or even human errors that customers may have at the object level. So, no, it sounds like this is a great feature functionality and heavily being used with with our customers to help prevent from. Failure. So, you know, this kind of concludes our series of two key features that we recently introduced and are heavily popularly used by our customers from not just protecting their data from internal errors, but also ex helping customers prevent exposures from external uh, malicious actors. So, and giving them very simple, easy way of ensuring that data is protected at all times. Yeah, and uh, you know we already hear from customers, uh, all the customers who are using these features, how it has made their life so much better <laughs> and uh, less exciting in good ways. Uh, so the reason we are doing uh, you know this podcast, we are doing this uh, session, is to basically uh, share that with uh, a broader audience and ensure uh, more and more customers have awareness of these capabilities. And hopefully they can use these capabilities and it can make them sleep better at night. Well, thank you very much, Sivachis. And thank you everyone for joining us and stay tuned. We'll be continuing more of these series to help you understand your data protection strategies and preventing your data from getting leaked or being destroyed accidentally as we go through from cloud storage perspective. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh,